Hello and welcome to STEM with Mr N, where every week I'll be performing different demonstrations and explaining the science behind what we're seeing. This week, we're going to take a look at air pressure. Let's check it out. Some of the experiments I'll be performing this week should not be done at home without adult supervision. Look for a caution logo in the top corner of the video to point out what experiments you will need adult help with at home. This week I decided to get one of my friends involved in the video. I gave him a challenge. He was to take a square of toilet paper, scrunch it down into a ball, place it just inside the end of an empty plastic bottle, set that plastic bottle down on a table and blow that ball of toilet paper into the bottle. We'll check in later in this video to see how he got on. So what is air pressure? Well around the earth there is an atmosphere which is a collection of gas. This is mostly made up of nitrogen, oxygen, argon and carbon dioxide with small amounts of some other gases included like hydrogen and helium. You'll see from the picture that the Earth's atmosphere is made up of five layers. Now all of that gas is getting pulled down towards the Earth by the force of gravity. So down at the troposphere where we live, the gas there has the pressure of all of the gas on top of it being pulled down. Gas will try and fill any available space that it can and that is why you have the gas pressing on you at all times. So why don't we get crushed by air pressure? The reason is because we have pressure inside our bodies which is also pushing out the way and that stops us getting crushed. But we also need the air pressure to be able to breathe. When you open up your lungs, you are lowering the pressure in your lungs. This means that air outside with higher pressure will rush in. When you breathe out, you close your lungs. Therefore, you increase the pressure inside and it pushes the air back out. Now the atmosphere that is around the earth is the atmosphere that has always been here. So when you breathe in, you are breathing in some of the same atoms that have been breathed out by all the famous people in history, such as Albert Einstein and Stephen Hawking. This week I've done some experiments which explore the force of air pressure and also how we can change air pressure. I hope you enjoy the experiments. Let's see what I got up to this week. Our first experiment this week involves plastic bottles and balloons. Now if I showed you this bottle and asked you what was in it, most people would probably say nothing. But there is actually air inside the bottle and we are going to do an experiment which demonstrates the pressure of air. Now with this bottle, I have put a balloon just inside the top of the bottle and I've left it open so I can blow into it. What I'm going to do is try and blow up this balloon. And you'll have noticed I can't blow up the balloon. But I'm going to try it again with this bottle and let's see what happens. I was able to blow up the balloon that time. The only difference between these two bottles is that this bottle has a hole down here at the bottom. So when I tried to blow up this balloon, the air inside this bottle was pushing back under its pressure and stopping the balloon from blowing up. But when I tried to blow up this balloon, the air that's inside the bottle just now, it gets pushed out through that hole. Now if I blow up this balloon and pin my finger over the hole, watch what happens. I'm able to keep the balloon completely blown up inside the bottle. 
Now that I've got my finger over the hole, I'm stopping any more air getting into this bottle, so we now have equalised the pressures. But when I take my finger off the hole, watch what happens to the bone. It gets deflated because the air rushes back in the hole and pushes the balloon up the way and forces the air out of the balloon. The next thing I'm going to do with this bottle, with the hole in it, is I'm going to blow up the balloon, I'm going to pin my finger over the hole, I'm going to fill the balloon with water and we're going to see what air pressure is like when it's acting not just on a balloon with air in it, but a balloon with water in it. So we now have water in our balloon, I'm going to take my finger off the hole and we'll see what happens. So the air pressure is actually stronger than the force of gravity which is pulling down on the balloon and the water. If you want to know more about gravity, check out last week's video where I did a few different gravity experiments and explained more about what gravity is. We've just seen there an example of air pressure acting on a heavier object, which was the balloon filled with water. And we saw as the air came back into the bottle, the force of the air pressure pushed the balloon and the water up and the water actually spouted out the top of the bottle. Can you think of any other times when air pressure might be used to lift something heavy up into the air? I have a small example next to me of a drone which uses air pressure to lift itself up. But a better example would be an aeroplane. Now, the faster the air moves, the less pressure, the less force it has. So an aeroplane, when it takes off, it pushes air underneath its wing. And pushing that air underneath makes that air move slower than the air going across the top of the wing. So there is pressure being put underneath the wing to lift the plane up into the air and the faster air moving over the top doesn't push it down. There's a way we can demonstrate this with a sheet of paper. And you'll see that when I blow faster moving air across the top of the piece of paper, the pressure underneath will lift the paper up into the air. So it's important for engineers to understand how air pressure can affect objects, otherwise they would not have been able to make the aeroplane. The next experiment demonstrates ways in which air pressure can be changed. For this, I've got a bowl of cold water, I've got a straw with some putty, and I've got a glass bottle filled with boiling water. I'm going to tip out the boiling water, put the straw inside the glass bottle, put it all inside the bowl, and we'll see what happens. By heating up the air inside this glass bottle, we've lowered its pressure. Because the warmer air is, the faster it moves. So there was less pressure inside this bottle. And when we put the airtight seal on it with the straw and put it in the bowl, the air that was pushing down on the water was stronger outside the bottle than the air inside the bottle. So the stronger air pushed the water down and the only place that water had to go was through the straw into the bottle, which had less air pressure in it. I'm going to show you another experiment which involves changing air pressure. This time, I've got a plate with some water on it, a candle, and I've got a glass that I'm going to put over the top.
you'll have noticed that when the candle burned out, the water then rose up into the glass. We've changed the air pressure this time slightly differently from the last experiment. This time, because we've had a flame, it has used up air that was in the glass and that has lowered the pressure. And then the pressure, which is outside, is stronger than the pressure inside. So the water gets pushed down and the water only has one place to go because we've got a space here with less air pressure. So the water goes up inside the glass. Our final experiment of this week also involves changing the air pressure inside an item. This one, we've got a glass jar, we've got a balloon, which will just fit at the top of the glass jar just now. We've got a bit of card and we're going to use the lighter again. We're going to change the air pressure in the jar and we'll watch and see what happens. Because we used the fire inside this jar to burn up the air, we lowered the air pressure of the jar. That means there is a lot more pressure pushing down on the bone than was inside the jar pushing up on the bone. And it has been forced inside the jar. And as you can see, I can lift the balloon and the jar together, move them around, because the balloon has now got forced inside the jar and is jammed inside the top. We're going to check back in with my friend and see how he got on with his challenge. Knowing what you now know about air pressure, do you think he will be able to blow a ball of toilet paper into an empty plastic bottle? Let's see how he got on. So he couldn't blow the ball of toilet paper into the empty plastic bottle. Why? For the same reason that planes are able to fly. Because faster air does not have the same pressure as slower air. So when he's blowing that fast air to try and get the ball into the plastic bottle, the slower air inside has more pressure and it's stopping the ball from getting in. I hope you've enjoyed this week's episode, it's been a really fun one to make. If you have, like and subscribe and share the video with your friends. As always, I would like to take the opportunity to answer any science questions that any of you might have about any science topics at all. So feel free to email me at stemwithmrn at outlook.com and I'll get back to you with answers for your questions. Or I might even make a questions video if I get enough questions through. This has been STEM with Mr N, looking at air pressure. <laughs>